morning and welcome to Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. It's a Monday edition, Memorial Day. Hope everyone's having a great day or going to have a great day. I'm sure a lot of people will be heading to the beach or out on the lake or cooking out or what have you, but, but stay safe. Uh, we got a good show lined up for you. We got former Gator soccer player who plays all around the world, Havana Salon, joining us. And in the second portion of the program, we have former Gator running back, Keystone Moore, who is a two-time national champion here, uh, who played for Urban Meyer. But first, we're going to go straight to the Titan MR hotline, and we're joined by Gator great soccer player, Havana Salon. Good morning, Havana. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Doing well. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about your career. You, you grow up here in Gainesville. You go to Buholtz High School. You were a stud soccer player there. Obviously, Becky Burley and the Florida Gators have tremendous success with women's soccer players coming to play for them. But was Florida your main choice, or did you look at other schools as well? Um, to be honest, when the college process started, I kind of wrote Florida off from the get-go. I was from Gainesville, and the first thing I wanted to do was get out of town. Um, so I looked at UVA. Um, I looked at some other out-of-state schools. And I'd always had a relationship with Becky just from being a Gainesville girl. And she kept saying, you know, just come in, just come see the campus. And I said, you know, Becky, I've seen the campus. I live <laughs> here. Um, I ended up taking a meeting and the decision, it came down to UVA or Florida. And um, I ended up going with Florida just because the coaching staff um, had a really good meeting with them. And as much as I was itching to get out, Gainesville was just the right fit. That's great. Well, talk a little bit about your career. You know, a lot of our listeners are mostly, you know, they, they, they're very familiar with Gator football, basketball, some baseball, and some softball. But sometimes the spring sports, even though the University of Florida is dominant in spring sports and pretty, pretty much all the sports, just talk about what it was like to play here at the University of Florida and, and be on the women's soccer team. Yeah, I mean, I loved my four years at Florida. And if I could go back and do it again, I would. Um, I think the, for me, the greatest part of my experience was the coaching staff. Um, there's Becky, Vic, and Alan, and I think they create a really dynamic team. Um, and, you know, being a part of the University of Florida was such a different experience than growing up in Florida. I mean, not in Florida, sorry, in Gainesville. Um, so I think it really showed me a different side of Gainesville. Um, and the the soccer team was just a very it was a close team um so it was you know there's a culture to the team and I think that's what made the experience so positive is it's you're surrounded by a bunch of girls who have the same goals as you um and you're we obviously had a good coaching staff so I think it um it just was like the perfect combination for me and what I wanted out of college when you when you look back at your Gator career let some of our listeners know like some of the who is the toughest uh, opponent within the Southeastern Conference that y'all had to play year in and year out? Um, it changed throughout the years. South Carolina was always a big one for us. Um, and then my junior and senior year when Texas A&M became part of the SEC, um, they became another really good co competitor for us. It was, I would say, between Florida, Texas A&M, and South Carolina, um, my four years anyways, were the top teams. So from a soccer standpoint, you know, I'm a former football player and, and I know how football works and basketball, you know, the way they travel for these games, you know, we fly out the day before, spend the night and come back. Was it rough? Because did, did you all have to take a lot of buses at times, the soccer team? Yeah. So we usually had to bus to either Jacksonville or Orlando always. Um, and we played Friday, Sunday. So we'd bus out on a Thursday and fly, get in Thursday night, play Friday. Depending on where the game was, sometimes we bust between games or we'd fly between games. Sunday was usually a late night because Sunday kickoffs are one o'clock or three o'clock. Then you fly home, but you fly into Jacksonville or Orlando, which is another two hour drive home always. Um, so away weekends were definitely um, long and felt like we spent more time in a plane and a bus than we did in one place. No doubt. Uh, we're talking with Havana Salon, former Gator soccer player, plays all around the world. We'll get to that in a minute. We got a text here on the Titan MR hotline. It comes from Sarah. She wants to know, 
Havana, what was your favorite game that you played in as a Gator? Hmm. Um, I think my senior year, um, NCAA tournament, we were playing Stanford. Um, and we lost. So I understand it was a, a funny game for me to pick as my favorite, but I think for me that game embodied kind of like what our team was about. So we ended up having to fly like the day before Thanksgiving and all the, like this team got split up, flights got canceled, we got delayed and we ended up um, getting to Stanford on Thursday night, had a Thanksgiving meal and then played Stanford. We ended up going into penalty kicks and we lost in penalty kicks. Um, which was a tough way to go out my senior year. But that definitely, that game for me was just the most memorable because I think facing adversity is something that Becky always talks about, you know, and the travel day and the situation and all of that was out of our control. And I think that, um, you know, it was an exciting game, but nobody likes to lose in penalty kicks, you know, but it was still, a, uh, for me, my, the most memorable game. What did you get your degree in? Psychology. Psychology. Okay. So, you know, college girls that play soccer, I mean, I, I'm sure your dream is to play in the World Cup or on a national team. Uh, but when you left the University of Florida, you were drafted by Seattle in, in a women's professional soccer league. Talk a little bit about that, how that process works for young ladies like yourself. Yeah, so the NWSL, which is the league in the U.S., is a relatively new league. It's going on year seven or eight right now. So when I was getting drafted, I believe the league was three years old. Um, and the draft happens very different for women's soccer than it does for most other sports. At the time, the draft was done on Twitter. Oh, and wow. basically, the schools got to, I mean, the clubs would get together and they tweet out who they picked. So people are just sitting on their phone, like swiping through Twitter, like waiting for updates. Um, and basically your senior year, you put your name into the draft pool and then every team gets um, a certain amount of picks and a big difference with women's soccer and other sports is just because you get drafted doesn't mean you get a contract. So my, the year I got drafted, I was drafted with three other players to Seattle and I was the only player to get a contract. And that's how it's evolving as the league has gone on. But my rookie year, um, it was not uncommon that a lot of girls showed up and didn't get contracts. And then did you enjoy your time in Seattle? Because I, I saw where you were traded to Washington. Did you mm -hmm. like it there? Um, I had a good time in Seattle. I actually broke my leg my rookie year. So I missed my rookie year. And then I went back to Seattle after I'd recovered. Um, I loved the city. and um, But I think as far as the team goes, D.C., um, it was a good trade for me. Um, trades as well happen very differently in women's soccer than they do in other sports. I got a phone call on a Thursday night for my head coach. She's like, hey, you've been traded to DC. It's gonna be announced in two days. Oh, wow. Phone you, line ends. You, you played a lot of youth soccer on national teams. Talk a little bit about, you know, how you enjoyed that experience. Yeah, um, when I was in high school was the first time I was called into a U17 um, national team camp. And I actually participated in the U17 World Cup qualifiers. Um, we didn't qualify, which was a big upset for the U.S. at the time. Um, and then throughout college, I also did uh, under 20 national team camps and under 23. Um, and then I actually, the way that it works with international play is once you've played for the full team, you can no longer switch teams. And I actually have dual citizenship. So my mom was born in Jamaica. Um, and so prior to the last World Cup, Jamaica called and said, are you interested in joining our squad? Um, and so I moved from the U.S. to Jamaica and now officially represent Jamaica. Yeah, I was going to get to that uh, because you, have an, you had an opportunity to play either on the U.S. national team, the Hong Kong team, Cuba, or Jamaica, correct? Um, probably not Hong Kong. Although I was born there, I don't think that I had the technical um, – the, at the time when I was born there, it was a British colony. Okay. So I don't think I would have the actual ability to get that. Um, 
Well, playing for the, the uh, Jamaican national team, you're the only person to ever score a goal in the Women's World Cup for Jamaica. I mean, that had to be an unbelievable feeling. Talk about that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, playing in a World Cup, I think, is, is a goal for any female soccer player, um, you know. And the whole experience, Jamaica has never had never qualified before in the past. So this was the first World Cup that they'd ever attended. So as a new team, there was definitely a lot of growing pains. Um, and we, the goal came in the last, in our last group stage game against Australia. Um, and I had gotten subbed in at halftime and we were down to zero at that time. And I scored in probably the second minute of the second half. And it, when I see it back on film, it's as if, you know, when, when after the game and everyone said, you know, what were you thinking? And I was like, I had no thoughts in that moment. I was so just, there was, it was just like calm, you know, and everyone said, well, what about the stadium when it erupted? And I was like, I didn't hear any of it, you know, because for me, I think I play my best when I'm not thinking. And that moment for me was a very, um, I mean, surreal looking back, but in the moment, I don't think it's possible to really grasp the magnitude of it. Oh, we got a text here on the Titan MR text line. It comes from Susie. Susie wants to know, uh, Havana, how did you get your name, Havana? <laughs> um, so my dad is Cuban, and uh, my mom actually decided on Havana. Havana is also the capital of Cuba, for those who don't know. Right. That's just very cool. Um, so once you were done with playing for Seattle and Washington, you decided to go overseas. Right now, I believe you play for a team in Paris. Talk a little bit how that is playing in another country. Uh, yeah. So after the DC, I went to Norway for a season. Um, and Norway was an amazing experience. I think Europeans view soccer sort of as Americans view football and baseball and basketball. You know, it's a part of the culture. So part of me wanted to go overseas to experience a new culture, but also to play somewhere where soccer was valued a bit more. Um, and the style of play is very different in Europe. Um, fortunately, in Norway, everybody speaks English. So the whole language barrier was not much of an issue. Um, but I was in like a beautiful town on the beach. Norway has like beautiful beaches. Um, and then after my season in Norway, I was going to go to Paris and play. Um, unfortunately, COVID shut that down pretty quickly. Right. So, you know, I think a lot of people familiar with, uh, I don't know a whole lot about soccer, but they know about the, the European leagues for the men. Um, as you mentioned, how big is women's soccer uh, overseas? It's much bigger and it's been around for a lot longer. So the team that I played for in Norway has been around since 1919. Oh, goodness. And that's women's soccer, which is just – you know, for like I said, the U.S. League is seven, eight years old. Um, so it's just more established. And in Europe, so the league, the Premier League, which is one of the biggest men's league, has a women's side as well. So your, your Chelsea's and your Liverpool's and your Man City's all have female teams that are partnered with them. And then, oh so all of the big, I would say the top leagues for women's soccer would be England, France, and Germany and Spain also have good leagues. Um, but England, the Premier League, I would say, is ranked one of the highest along with the U.S. League. Now, are your plans to go back to Paris when all this is said and done and we get back to some normalcy? Um, it's hard to say. Uh, right now, all of the leagues are sort of in this deciding pattern as to what's going to go next. Um, I would like to come back and play in the U.S. Um, but that sort of just depends on what they do this season and how much of a season they're actually able to get in. So even if, you know, I don't know how it all works, but let's just say you're under contract with the team in Paris, you decide you don't want to go back there. You have an opportunity to go play for the, one of the, the women's teams here in the U.S. Do you go back into some type of draft or the last team you were with still have your rights? So once I left the Spirit and went to play in Norway, the Spirit would hold my rights for another year. So the year that I'm in Norway, when I came back, no team owns my rights. And so I would then just 
contact teams or my agent would contact teams about signing me as long as I'm not in bound in another contract. France terminated my contract when the COVID happened. So I'm technically um, not under contract with any team. I got you. At Center State Bank, we put business first. We are the largest community bank in the state of Florida. Center State has five convenient Alachua County locations to serve you better. Come in and experience the Center State difference. To learn more, visit centerstatebank.com, Center State Bank, member FDIC. So when is the next World Cup for, for the women? In 2023. Okay, are your plans to play for Jamaica again? Yeah, so I'm not, I, I have, I can't change again. So since I've played uh, for the full team, I won't be able to play for any other national team again. I gotcha. Okay, so I'm learning all kinds of stuff, and I'm sure a lot of our, <laughs> our listeners are learning all about soccer. So when, let's go back to the University of Florida. When you were here, did you enjoy going to the Gator football games? Did you attend those? Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, most of the games, so if we had a game on the same day, we were only, right. or the next day, we were only allowed to go for half a game, was typically the rule. You had to leave at halftime. Um, and so I, I actually went to a couple games in high school as well before I attended Florida, but I think attending as a student is a much different experience as well. Um, but you, we usually went as a team for half a game on Saturdays before um, we got in trouble for staying for the whole. <laughs> so tell me this, um, you know, because like you said, over in Europe, the premier leagues and all that kind of stuff, um, they love their soccer over there. How would you compare, and I'm sure you've been to some men's games, over there, how would you compare the fan, the atmosphere to those big time soccer games to a game in the SEC in the swamp? I would say it's very similar. Um, I think the passion that they have for soccer in Europe is, I mean, so I went to one of my first um, games in France two years ago. And I remember the opposing team was like um, netted in. And once the other team scored the entire, I don't know what they had, but everything just like went up in flames and every, and I was like, wow, like they're really upset that we just like the other team had just like the home team had scored. And the away fans were just like rioting and they were in nets and they were like, it was, it was a crazy experience to see how passionate the fans are. Well, we got a special guest uh, joining our program here. <laughs> Becky Burley wants to say hello. Havana! Becky, how are you? <laughs> I figured, you know, we didn't get to play tennis this week, so I could see you this way. <laughs> Becky, Havana's been uh uh, teaching us all about this soccer, women's soccer leagues overseas. Uh, it's very interesting because I know nothing about it. And I'm well, sure a lot of our listeners a big don't job. know. If, if you're trying to educate Shane Matthews about soccer, you got a big job on your hands. Yeah, th there's no doubt about that. But she's done very well. <laughs> so, Hob, are you having fun on this show? Yeah, I am. I, I was a little bit intimidated at first by the whole technology of Zoom, but um, whoa, once whoa, it got whoa, up whoa. and running. You don't know how to do Zoom? When it comes to technology, I'm one of the most inept 27-year-olds you'll ever meet. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know nothing true. about technology. She yeah. lives on a farm. She lives on a farm, yeah. remember? <laughs> so, Becky, while we have you here and we got a few more minutes, talk to us about what kind of player she was for you. Well, Havana is like uh, the Cadillac of soccer players. Like people watch her and they're just like, she's smooth. They, they just, I mean, I cannot tell you how many people just talk to me about, they just love watching Havana run and move with the ball because she's just very composed, but very athletic. Um, everybody understands soccer, understands like Havana's cerebral knowledge of the game too. So they appreciate that as well. Well, she was telling us at the beginning of the interview that she pro she wasn't going to be a Gator, but somehow I you know. convinced her. <laughs> it was a hard job. I feel like I had to really work at that one, you know, because sometimes I think when you grow up here, it's hard to want to stay here. You want to, you know, get out and explore new worlds. Yeah, that, that is very true. Um, t tell us, both of y'all, from a, uh, how, what is like the average – 
career of a women's professional soccer player? Whew, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I think what limits the professional career length is the amount of money you make or don't make. Right. <laughs> it's, not <necessarily, laughs> it's not necessarily the, um, you know, the lifespan, because you look at some of the players like that are on the, the Women's World Cup team and the U.S. women's soccer team. I mean, they are, you know, mid to late 30s and close to 40 and still playing at a very high level. Yeah, so yeah, it's 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 interesting, uh, you know, to me because the average career of an NFL player is only two and a half years, and I was just curious from a a, a female's perspective of playing professional soccer. Um, well, you know what, Becky, we appreciate you joining the show. We're going to wrap this thing up, and we're going to be joined by Keystone Moore. You got anything else you want to say to Havana before we leave? Um, you know, I just want Havana is known amongst a lot of Gator fans for the power of her bun. She's got a very serious. <laughs> fun game going so we can't forget to mention that well that that's good stuff so uh well we hope to see gator soccer back on the field here pretty soon havana thank you for joining the program becky thanks for jumping in as well uh you ladies have a good night thanks all right yeah thanks for having uh, us havana salon and becky burley join us on the titan MR hotline we're going to take a time out here when we come back we're going to be joined by keystone moore former running back two-time national champion under Urban Meyer. You're watching and listening to Pot Up with Matthews in the Morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. We'll be right back. Time out! Time out! Hey! Time out! Time out! Time out! There we go. Good. We want to take this moment to thank all our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Let's give them something to cheer for now. Our gridiron sponsors are Crime Prevention Security, small enough to serve you, large enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Peachland Dentistry, Gator Nation's number one choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte and surrounding areas. Area Rug Masters, your number one choice for rug cleaning. And Pound Hurt, preferred personal injury attorneys. Our touchdown sponsors are Campus USA Credit Union, Celebration Point Town Center, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, The Keys Grill and Piano Bar, The Digital Mortgage Guy, Adams Ribs, Cloud Nine Spa, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Center State Bank, Gator Bait Media, and Davis Chevrolet. If you are interested in promoting your business on the show, you can visit our website, potupwithshane.com and click on the Advertise button or call Freddie Weeby at 352-284-3733. Again, thank you for all the great businesses that support the show. Please remember, if you like what we are doing here, thank our sponsors and support the businesses that support us. He's looking, still looking. He's going for the end zone. He's got a touchdown! Woo! Woo! Welcome back to Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. It's a Memorial Day edition. I uh, hope everyone's having a great day or going to have a great day today. Uh, we appreciate Havana Salon joining us, talking Gator soccer. But now we're going to feature uh, former Gator running back Keystone Moore, two-time national champion here under Ur Urban Meyer. Uh, good morning, Keystone. How you doing, my man? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? How you doing? We're doing well. Uh, we appreciate you joining us this morning. And uh, you're out in Texas. Hope you and your family are staying safe during these times. Let's go back to, uh, I guess, 2005 when you were coming up playing high school ball in Texas talk about you know who recruited you to come to the University of Florida what other schools you took visits to and basically why you chose to be a Gator well yeah that's that's first of all you know it was a good time uh in, in Florida but uh Texas you we always know you know Texas is a big big thing and uh out here a lot of people was asking me, you know, why I didn't stay uh, in Texas. And uh, in general, I actually got recruited by all the Texas schools. So in high school, I actually played um, basketball, football, and ran track. So I got a couple of scholarships, actually dual scholarships, because I actually did pretty good in track. But it was more on the um, 
the high jump. So I did high jump. So oh, wow. I, I won. Yeah, I won uh, as a sophomore. I won district sophomore, junior year, and senior year. So I went to regional and uh, state every single year. So I had dual scholarships, Texas Tech to A&M, to a couple of um, schools here in Texas. Um, but me in my head, I, w I was always, I always wanted to get out of Texas just because I lived in it all my life. So I just mm -hmm. always, just since a, you know, a little kid, I always like to challenge myself since I was small, I always played with the, the older guys, you know, hung out with the older crowd just to get better. Uh, and, you know, Big 12 was good. I mean, that's what it was back in the time. And, but I always wanted to play with the best. So SEC was the best. So that's where I kind of wanted to go um, in general. So our, just a, a place that can give me an opportunity. I felt like if anybody can give me the opportunity uh, to play, I could compete against anybody, I would, you know, eventually – you know, be the starter just by my work ethic. Maybe not the talent in general, but just the work ethic. Um, so, I mean, when it comes down to the schools in general, I had like over like 20 plus scholarships, so maybe like 30 or so, I can't even remember. I used to write them down like on a piece of paper. My first mm -hmm. scholarship was actually Arizona. Uh, okay. That was my first scholarship. We actually put it in the frame. That was my junior year. That was my first one's first scholarship, put it in a little frame. And then right from there, like that's when they just started rolling in, you know, how, you know, college goes, they see one person do a scholarship, like, okay, yeah, that's, that start, you know, mm -hmm. you know, dishing them out uh, to this guy, you know, he has talent and that's just start dishing them out. So my, um, the places I was looking for, like what I was really looking for as, as a, as a, you know, student athlete, I was really heavy into academics. I mean, I'm still am and I always knew, uh, you know, sports in general will get me to where I needed to be able to pay for my, my college, uh, my college uh, career. So, you know, in high school, I had, a, you know, 3.5 going through um, college. So I wanted a place that, you know, had a good academic culture. I wanted a place that um, it wasn't just, you know, football that was good. I wanted a place like overall was good, mm -hmm. just like a Texas. I mean, Texas had them all, you know, the basketball, the football, the, you know, anything, you know, I could, I have pride in my school, you know, uh, is really what it came to. It just wasn't football or something other. So the places I actually went to um, for my official visits were, um, I was talking to this, I was talking to some people about this too the other day. So it was uh, Wisconsin is where I went to my official visit. I went to Iowa for official visit. I went to um, Oklahoma State. As an official visit, I went to um, Arizona State as an official visit, and then I went to Florida as an official visit. So those were my official visits. Um, Wisconsin was, I, I had a couple, I had a teammate that went out there who played for Wisconsin. Uh, and, you know, being a running back, you know, they, they took the ball a little bit. A lot uh, out there. So, yeah, a lot. So, you know, I was trying to, I was going out there and, and wanted to play out there uh, for a little bit. And I got out there, Iowa, and both of them was just too cold. I couldn't, I couldn't, the cold, <laughs> it wasn't, it was nothing out there either. I mean, I was like, ah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, Arizona State uh, was good. I liked Arizona State. Um, for the most part, I uh, had a little incident out there and I couldn't go, but like the, culture and everything in general that came to play in it it was uh it was a beautiful place I mean obviously we played a national championship out there in Arizona mm -hmm. uh, as well so that was it was really good and I actually lived in Arizona for a little bit too so brought me back some memories when I when I lived out there um Oklahoma State was actually where I was going to go prior to Florida. So I was officially going to go to Oklahoma State. We had the number one class and everything. And it was actually under Les Miles, who was at LSU. Oh, yeah. uh, when we played. So Les Miles is who recruited me heavy. That's where I was going to go. Um, I was going to go there. Um, and Coach Porter uh, was a running back coach, which he actually went with Les Miles to LSU in that particular time. So I had a couple of my cousins uh, that was going to go to Oklahoma State with me. Uh, I, I mean, it was going to be uh, legit. I actually 
in the beginning wanted to go to Oklahoma, right? So mm-hmm. I want to get out of Texas, but I kind of wanted to be close a little bit. Right. And I was going to go to Oklahoma, but I don't know if you got to uh, know the, um, uh, the guy by the name of uh, Adrian Peterson. Yeah, he was pretty good. You guys heard of him? Yeah, yeah, he's pretty, yeah good. he's pretty good. So Adrian Peterson was at uh, Oklahoma at that time. And me personally, I wanted to actually play as a freshman. I wanted to play. I wanted to be able to compete for a starting job. Um, and I wanted my, my number. I had 33 for all my life. And I wanted to keep that number uh, to continue into my college career. So those were some of the, like, the terms that you know I was looking at as a student athlete going into my collegiate um, career and endeavor, um, those are some of the things I was looking at. So Oklahoma was kind of out of the uh, the mix um, there. So yeah, my next one was going to be Oklahoma State. And then obviously, um, Les Miles, we heard the news that he was leaving. He told us, you know, obviously that's how it is. You can't tell anybody that you're going anywhere, or that you're leaving or anything. And, you know, we asked him and he did said nope. And the next thing you know, he went to LSU. Uh, and then, you know, Florida came in, like it was at the end, you know, uh, urban came in, like I said, he, he, he actually recruited me, um, actually from Utah. Uh, but he was, Utah was all the way at the bottom of the list. So I was definitely wasn't going to Utah, but then when he came back, um, and, you know, said that he was going to Florida, you know, I made that consideration who recruited me out of here was actually uh, Billy Gonzalez. So Billy okay. G uh, mm-hmm. was uh, who recruited me in the Texas market um, at this particular time. So, uh, you know, we had Stan Drayton. Uh, that was my running back coach. But Billy G was the person that, you know, was recruiting and, you know, talking to my coach. Head coach here was Tim Beck, which actually uh, was a coach with Urban Meyer and Stan Drayton in Ohio, which was like crazy how the mm-hmm. universe and everything kind of goes. Um, so they coached together. So my coach and Billy G and everything got, got together and, I, you know, they met my my family and everything. And I, you know, I went out there and um, obviously, you know, you got, you got Florida and SEC, um, beautiful place uh, to be. Uh, if anything, you know, Family is a vacation spot if you need to. It's an uh, unfamiliar place for me, but, you know, a second home now. You know, I stayed in Florida for about 11 years prior to coming back to Texas um, after college and everything. So, you know, definitely uh, I think was a great decision on my behalf on educational-wise. Uh, you know, obviously we're top uh, academically, um, you know, one of the top, and then sports. Uh, athletic wise and not just in football like you know I said in the first place they good in basketball track volleyball Mm -hmm. soccer you name it we got it you know and that's the things I can hold my hat on if anybody say anything I said well you know look at the baseball team look at my baseball team our baseball team beat yours you know lacrosse we coming (laughs) in (laughs) lacrosse it doesn't matter what it is I mean overall and that's really something that I look and you know and you know had pride in too, just going out there and just supporting, you know, the, the Gator um, in general. And that's what made me make my decisions. Urban gave me the chance to come in and compete. He just came in. So he was starting all over, didn't know anybody there. So he, he said, hey, you know, you come in, you, you know, you can compete with the guys. I don't know anybody. So I have just no bias uh, for myself. Uh, that number 33 is available. I said, okay. And I said, can I, you know, do I have the ability, uh, the availability to play as a freshman, you know, cause I, I didn't want to redshirt. Uh, I want to come in and play. He was like, Hey, yeah, you, you, you have a chance to go for the starting job. Um, you know, come in and compete. And I was like, all right, well, that's all, that's all I needed to know. Went out there, did a uh, recruiting trip, uh, you know, met all the guys, met some of my class, uh, classmates and everything you know some of the people was on a recruiting trip with me ended up um, going like David Nelson both of us are from Texas Mm -hmm. Um, and you know we went uh, out together so now it was a good time Uh, and and now talk yeah talk talk a little bit about you know I mean gosh you were here four years at the University of Florida you win two national titles Um, that, that that's just phenomenal Talk a little bit about the 06 team. You know, I I know Tebow had a lot of hype, but he was was basically 
a third down back coming in or fourth down back coming in and running the quarterback power. Talk about Chris Leak. You know, he's kind of, uh, you know, in the Gator Nation, he, he's kind of forgotten about. Talk about the, the dynamics between Tebow and Leak and, and how they worked together that year. Uh, I mean, yeah, like you said, Tebow, uh, it was a lot of stuff, you know, Tebow has a big follow, you know what I'm saying? A big follow. I didn't know who he was, you know what I'm saying? But I, I heard about him before he even made it into, like I said, I came in in 05 uh, and, you know, we was hearing about this guy already, but yeah, when I came in, Chris Leak was the guy mm -hmm. and uh, I still, my guy, that's my quarterback until this day. Uh, that's my guy in general. You know, I still, you know, talk to him every once in a while. But I mean that that spiral, uh, you know, just to get off top, that spiral is like like none other. Right. Uh, that extra little little spin, I don't know what it is. That extra little spin, he had the perfect like little spiral in general. And I think they kind of um, mesh together because I I feel like uh, uh, you know Chris Leak is more of a, a traditional like quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, you know he's he's out to you know, help his, help his guys, you know, whatever he can do to get out, throw the ball, you know, he's very, his IQ uh, and, you know, the playbook and, you know, seeing the field was like high. So he helped the, the running backs, the quarterbacks, he would get out extra time and, and work with you. Um, throwing that time, especially me being a freshman uh, too. Um, I think when Tebow came in, he was just another added, dynamic to you know help the team win I mean I don't think uh I think they mesh together but I mean um Chris Leak was a you know a, a team guy so whatever you know anybody needed uh he was the ultimate team player so you know he didn't really bad mouth anybody he did what you know he needed to do on and off the field he didn't hear anything bad about him or or anything he just Whatever you need him to do, he, he's going to do it. So when Tebow came in, you know, and Urban wanted him to, you know, play some of the snaps and do some runs or whatever, it is whatever. You know, he, mm -hmm. he was he was up to it. We got a Facebook Live comment here, a question brought to you by Pound Hurt, your preferred business interruption attorneys. Uh, they want to know, how was it playing for Urban Meyer? Urban Meyer? Uh, different. Uh, you know, Irvin, I mean, he he he's very focused. He's, I mean, genius at what he does. He has a definitely has a blueprint uh, model. I mean, obviously you can see goes to any team and you know they're winning. Uh, so his his concept and what he does uh, in general is is dynamic. I mean, he he knows how to put the people in the places that they need to be put in, so they have their strengths there. He knows how to get people uh, to do what they need to do um, in order to actually win. Uh, and, you know, he, he holds people accountable. And that's, that's a big thing of being the head leader and stuff like that. Holding people accountable is the biggest thing. And that's what he did. And, you know, he'll, he'll give you your perks. He'll, he'll make you feel bad if you didn't do something, you know, for the team. Uh, in general, he was a you know a team guy, and he had his guys. He knew who his guys was, and he made it known who the guys that you know were his guys. You know, and if you wasn't his guy, then you're like uh, you know you would want to be his guy, or you know he's not talking to you, uh, pretty much. Uh, and that's just how how Urban was, you know. And so you know you want that attention because you want to get the ball, or you want to you know get some plays, or you know just be a part of the team because he built the culture to what it was. That's how we got to, you know, become two-time national championship just because his development of putting people where they need to be put it in their strengths um, and then developing, you know, leaders into great leaders. I mean, an average leader into a great leader um, within the, the playing field, you know, making people step up and get out of their comfort zone just by, you know, having that, dirt like on the grind you know bring your book it yeah 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 your helmet bring everything a lot of the stuff that we did in that time like you definitely would not be able to do at all i remember we was talking <laughs> on the yeah. phone with uh major and and black and uh you know uh murph uh and all those guys and we were just talking about like some of the stuff that we had to do and like 
yeah, they couldn't, they can't do it right now. It's against the rules. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> that was some of the stuff we, we were doing. We're speaking with Keystone Moore. You can follow him on Twitter at KMO33. Uh, we got a text here on the Titan MR text line from William. William wants to know, Keystone, what's your favorite greatest moment as a Gator? Favorite greatest moment? Um, I would say uh, the national championship, 2008 national championship. That's the greatest moment. I mean, because, you know, as a senior, you know, you always – you know, I was a captain uh, of that, that team too. So just knowing you leaving on a high note, you know what I'm saying, leaving, you know, the people in the past, knowing that you left on top. You know, so there's nothing you can't – like you can't go back or anything. You left, you know, with, you know, that momentum. Hey, what are you guys going to do next year? You know, that we – left at the peak as a, as a senior left on top. Um, like I said, again, I was a, I was a captain at that, at that time. Um, and you know, that was my, that was my moment leaving out of that, that last game in the, in the swamp, you know, we had the flowers and giving out, I mean, here in the crowd, I mean, the best stadium, uh, in America, in the country, uh, playing that last game, you know, in the swamp that, um, you know, uh, who we play uh, Citadel, I think. Um, I mean, that was that was a that was a moment uh, for me. And then that national championship, just going against you know Oklahoma, which I had you know some of my teammates from like high school on that team. Right. Yeah. So and then playing kind of like in the home turf, you know, in Miami, you know, just set it, you know, just set the pace, set the mood. Uh, it, was, it was a great time, you know, just spending with the guys and, and the team and pretty much what you built. Because, I mean, all all the years prior, I mean, pretty much all those guys are gone. So it's like a team that we kind of like built and, and you know, bonded with and got to that actual um, stage, you know, together. And we had a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of talent on that 2018. No so. doubt about it. So you would say the 08 team is better than the 016. I would say the 08 team is better than the 2016 because we had a lot of the people that was on the 06 team on the 2018 plus right. more. Yeah, uh, yeah, no doubt. Keystone, you played a little bit in the NFL, and you, like you said, you're back in Texas. Let everybody know. I mean, you got multiple businesses out there. What's going on with Keystone Moore uh, out in Texas? Well, right now, um, I, I do a, a sales and marketing uh, firm, so I'm a sales and marketing firm. So it's it's called 38 Management. Uh, I partner with a company. It's called Metroplex Management. So what we do, we're, we're we work with large retail, our large companies, Fortune 500 companies inside of retail stores. So pretty much, if you go to any Sam's Club and you see the people that you see that hassle you to say, "Hey, who you use for your cable and internet?" That's our organization. I'm a franchise owner inside of uh, the Sam's Club or the Costco's or and, and things like that. Um, so that's what I do right now. So I'm an owner there. And then also uh, I go and, you know, talk to, you know, kids, which is pretty much all athletes' passion is just kind of helping the next generation uh, through your actual journey. So that's something I'm, that's in the mix right now that I'm trying to get going. Um, I do tours and everything to different um to schools so it's the it's the good tour so uh, my company is called good vibes athletics so good is the acronym for greatness over own destruction um so i do the good tour and obviously we can't do it right now but i kind of do it within the uh the summertime i go to or within the school year i go to different schools and go and talk to the kids and things like that um get them get them ready and, and do camps in the summer times for some of the guys and stuff that's good stuff so how, how many of your former teammates on, you know, whether it was the 06 team or the 08 team, do you stay in touch with? Oh, I got a, a good list. I mean, I just talked to Harris, Steve Harris. I talked to Metter. I talked to uh, Julian Riley. That's 06. I talked to Murph, Lewis Murphy. I talked to Major Wright. Uh, I talked you to You know, he, he's got his book coming out. Yep. I know his book. Well, his book is already out. So we was heavy on that. I, so, you know, endorse him i mean he's great book so he got the book that's out right now uh major pain so um that's something that he has going on so uh, anybody that's been on the team or been associated with me in any part of my life i'm, I'm there to support those guys 
because uh, we've been in it together. I mean, we 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 blood, sweat, tears, the the whole nine, and we did it all together. So it's always uh, love from you know, even if we don't talk to each other for a year, you know, we get on the phone. Finally, uh, we back at it like just like we was in a locker room. So. Um, yeah, I get. I'm, I'm in touch with a lot of the guys: David Nelson, uh, Smitty, Butch, Riley, Riley Cooper. Uh, like, yeah, I talked to a good amount <laughs> of the guys. Yeah. I was yeah. going to ask you. Um, you know, I was thinking back to that '08 team. You know, after Tebow made the speech after losing to Ole Miss, mm -hmm. how were practices different after that loss? To be honest, I know a lot of people, and I don't want to, you know, downplay his uh, his speech or anything. Um, but you know, Tebow was the mouthpiece of our, you know, our, our kind of, well, he was the 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 face. Mm -hmm. uh, should I say he put the face on on Tebow, and usually the 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 quarterbacks are in general. But at the end of the day, we just felt like we shouldn't have lost that game. Uh, you know, like plain and simple, like nobody in the locker room in general, we all felt the same way. Like we all said the same thing, you know what I'm saying? But obviously in the, the way that, you know, Tivo is and the way he's preserved, you know, they, you know, they, they put it, you know, into a frame and everything like that. But typically like anybody would have said, everybody would have said the exact thing because we shouldn't have lost. I mean, we lost by one point. It, it's like we couldn't get an inch for uh, like a, I still think about that. It was like an inch. Like, we, you know, two times the inch. We couldn't get the first down. It's crazy to me, you know what I'm saying, to Ole Miss and, you know, not to discredit any, you know, team because all SEC teams any given, you know, time or any given day can be, you know, can lose just in SEC. And that's why you want to play in the best league because anybody can lose. It doesn't matter what the record is. Everybody's coming out to play and you got the greatest athletes um, out there. That's why SEC has, you know, the most, you know, first rounds over like the last 14 or whatever it is years um, in general. Um, but that nothing really changed in the locker room. We just knew that we need to come to play uh, for sure. Like that, you know, may, you know, we was feeling ourselves a little bit too much uh, because we knew it was good. Um, and that right there told us, you know, just reiterated that, hey, if we're going to go out like we want to go out, uh, and not have the year that we had the year prior, which is 2007, which is pretty much the, the worst year we had out of those four years I was there, out of losing was. Um, we needed to step it up. We need to step our game up. We need to take it up uh, an extra notch uh, because people are not going to lay down for us. So they're not going to lay down until we make them lay down. So we need to put up, you know, a shut up, you know. Right. That's really what we came, that's really what, what it was, you know, after that, that loss, it just put us all into perspective. Let's get this thing going. And, and Tebow was pretty much the, the mouthpiece for us to go out there and express what everybody felt in the locker room anyways. Um, just, you know, they made it into a, uh, a plaque. Yep. yep. <laughs> Let's put with Keystone Moore on the Titan MR hotline. Uh, you can follow him at Twitter at KMO33. Last thing for you, buddy, and we appreciate you joining us today. Dan Mullins back at Florida. He was your offensive coordinator when you were here. Been here for two years. Turned the program around. Won two major bowl games. Uh, your thoughts on what he's doing, and um, is he going to bring us a national title here in the next few years? Of course. Oh, we already know he's going to bring a national championship. All you needed was the the right people and everything around him, and, and to get back into a situation where he can be put into that predicament to get to a national championship because you know everybody has their prestige I mean Florida can get there I and mean, he was at Mississippi State it's kind of it's kind of hard you know you can win as many as you want to but it's just you know you got to have the name behind it you know and the, and the fans behind it uh but you know when they said you know coach mother was coming back I was I was like, all right, national, here we come. <laughs> national championship is ready just because I know what he built off of, like the people that he surrounds himself uh, around and, you know, just how he works. You know, he's a player's coach. You know, he's here to, you know, help, support, you know, and win. He, he you know, he comes from the, the Urban Meyer era too. Um, you know, to the notes, he's very 
well diverse and you know that that skill level and knows how to um establish and, and treat um uh, quarterbacks as you see with Dak and Tebow uh, and everything get them to a uh, elite level uh to perform like they need to perform as you can see you know last year with uh Trask and stuff like that so I mean got them to where you need to be when you got a quarterback that's hurt and somebody just coming out and you know becoming a, a star like that you know, some of that has to, to deal with, uh, you know, Coach Mullen and, you know, the coaching that he puts in and, you know, do your job, you know, is pretty much what it comes down to. So I think he's a phenomenal coach. Uh, he always been. I mean, he was when he was with us, too, and he's pretty much established himself. How coach he is right now, just his track record and, and what he's bringing to, like, Florida right now with the two – uh, 10 year win. I mean, 10 year, uh, 10, uh, 10 wins both years. Um, so you can only get better, you know, you can only get better. So I know he's going to hold the guys accountable, uh, just like any other time. And, you know, national championship, that's, that's it. Yep. That's what we're waiting that's on. It. That's, that's, that's coming. Well, we appreciate you joining us today, my man. Good luck with your businesses. Hopefully we'll see you in the swamp for a game uh, this year. You and your family stay safe, my man. All right, man. Appreciate you, uh, and thanks for having me on. Absolutely. That's Keystone Moore, and you can follow him on Twitter at KMO33. Uh, we're going to take our final time out of the program. When we come back, uh, we'll wrap this show up. You're watching and listening to Pot Up with Matthews in the Morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. We'll be right back. Time out! Time out! Hey! Time out! Time out! Time out! There we go. We want to take this moment to thank all our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Let's give them something to show for now. Our Gridiron sponsors are Crime Prevention Security, small enough to serve you, large enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Peachland Dentistry, Gator Nation's number one choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte and surrounding areas. Area Rug Masters, your number one choice for rug cleaning and Pound Hurt, preferred personal injury attorneys. Our touchdown sponsors are Campus USA Credit Union, Celebration Point Town Center, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, The Keys Grill and Piano Bar, The Digital Mortgage Guy, Adams Ribs, Cloud Nine Spa, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Center State Bank, Gator Bait Media, and Davis Chevrolet. If you are interested in promoting your business on the show, you can visit our website, potupwithshane.com, and click on the Advertise button or call Freddie Weeby at 352-284-3733. Again, thank you for all the great businesses that support the show. Please remember, if you like what we are doing here, thank our sponsors and support the businesses that support us. He's locking, still locking. He's going for the end zone. He's got a touchdown! Welcome back to Pot Over Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. A Memorial Day edition. Uh, celebration points where the Gators come to celebrate with premium brands like Bass Pro Shop, Tommy Hilfiger, Hotel Indigo, Nike, Medici's, Regal Cinemas, and coming soon, the HBC's new restaurant, Spurrier's Gridiron Grill and Visor's Rooftop Bar. We will see you at Celebration Point where the Gators come to celebrate. Also, this day in sports... Uh, which is brought to you by the best restoration. Do you have COVID-19 concerns? Do what everyone is doing and hire the best restoration to fully sanitize and sterilize your home or office. Visit their offices this week for a free bottle of hand sanitizer when you mention the code chain. Call them 352-234-8994. This day in sports back in 1922, old Babe Ruth was suspended one day and fined 200 bucks for throwing dirt on an umpire. Uh, wouldn't that be something if you only got fined 200 bucks for throwing dirt on an umpire these days? Um, we want to thank Havana Salon, former Gator soccer player, now playing professionally overseas. The first uh, girl to ever score a goal for the Jamaican national team in a World Cup. Um, also want to thank former Gator running back Keystone Moore, two-time national champion for joining us on this Memorial Day. Hope uh, everyone stays safe out there. On tomorrow's program, we're going to have 
former Gator receiver Carlos Alvarez and good old buddy Martin. Stay safe, folks. Enjoy your Memorial Day. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.